Would you survive if caught in the middle of the land of the lost? I'd probably get lost. Luckily for the Marshall family, in this cult classic 1974 series, they do all right. In this time warped alternate universe inhabited by primates, dinos, slea stacks, oh my. This was the best Saturday morning fair a kid could ask for. And as the family fought to survive and searched for a way home, we comfortably got to inhabit an exotic and fascinating world of the land of the lost. Come on, dig in while we've got a chance. Hey, look at the size of this. I'm your guide, Nostalgic Nick. And today we're revisiting a terrific cast of possibly Sid and Marty Croft's greatest creation. We'll even find out what four-time NBA All-Star channeled his inner monster to play a hulking sleestack. If you enjoy this deep dive, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a throwback. Now then, let's get lost. Spencer Milligan. Rick Marshall is the patriarch. An incredibly protective and devoted father to Will and Holly, he was a forest ranger and led with messages of unity and taking the necessary precautions. You know, there's plenty of food around, but most of it's strange and unfamiliar to us, so we're gonna have to be careful about eating something that we haven't tested. And when Rick fell through a time doorway and exited the program after season two, the show suffered. One of Milligan's first roles was in the 1973 Woody Allen film Sleeper, but everybody knows him from Land of the Lost. The reason behind his departure? Of course it was money. All kinds of show-branded merchandise was being sold, including lunchboxes and compasses you name it. And Milligan thought that it was only fair that the cast see some of that yield. We later saw Milligan in four episodes of the Jack Klugman-led show Quincy M.E. in the early 80s. But his career never really left that prehistoric wonderland. Today, Spencer is 83 years old and resides in Door County, Wisconsin, where he teaches acting and directs local plays. Wesley Yur. Will was the sometimes whiny son, but grew to be just as devoted to his family as his dad. He was spirited, brave, and adventurous, even a bit reckless when he ignored the consequences. Stop it, Will! What do you think you're doing? This! No, son! We've got to make him tell us how to use it! Wesley Yur was living in Las Vegas as a 17-year-old kid and began working as a driver for Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence during their summer tour. After that summer, he moved to LA to begin the hunt. And one day he answered an ad and won the part of a neighbor boy on the Partridge family. You see, David Cassidy was threatening to leave the show. And the plan was for Yur's role to join the family band. Perhaps it was all a chess game, as Cassidy stayed on Partridge and Yur never got his time to perform. And I got the job, and then David found out about it. <laughs> and somehow, miraculously, he decided to re-sign his contract. We have two great throwback episodes on the Partridge family if you want to learn more about that iconic series. In 1974, Wesley wasn't waiting next door any longer. Along with booking his Will Marshall, he secured a recurring role as Michael Horton on Days of Our Lives. He'd complete 128 episodes from 74 to 1980, after which he hosted the popular Nickelodeon game show Finders Keepers. He could continued to thrive with children's programming. In 1999, he co-created the Emmy-nominated animated show Dragon Tales for PBS. Wesley's personal life unfortunately affected the business side too. Yur was a closeted homosexual in the early 70s and had a serious relationship with movie star Richard Chamberlain. But Chamberlain was nearly 20 years older, so he broke it off after a few years. And when the rumors of Yur's homosexuality got to NBC, they released him from his day of Our Lives contract in 1981. Yor finally discussed his sexuality during interviews for the 2009 Land of the Lost film reboot, and now he organizes and hosts HIV AIDS fundraisers in California. At 70 years old, he's done it all, made music, wrote books, as well as raised money for charitable causes. Kathy Coleman. Holly Marshall is a smart, creative, and spunky young pigtailed girl. She is resourceful, working hard for her family, and she took the liberty of naming much of the life and creatures in Land of the Lost. I think I'll name him Spot. Spot? Are you kidding? That thing out there is bigger than any dog I've ever seen. 
This was Kathy Coleman's first and most famous role, and many younger male fans admit to having a crush on the young checkered shirt and corduroy wearing actress. But she didn't act after her Holly, except in 2020, she did have a part in the TV movie Fault. Though it's no fault to her if it's not widely seen. Though she's been out of the limelight, she has written two memoirs, which actually highlights her time working on Land of the Lost. It's appropriately titled Run, Holly, Run. Today, Kathy is 59 years old and has two sons from a previous marriage. Both she and Wesley Ure made a cameo in the 2009 Will Ferrell reboot, though it didn't make the final cut. That was rude. <laughs> Philip Paley. Chaka is a memorable recurring creature from the show, an adolescent that resembles the extinct Paranthropus apes of Earth. He is covered from head to toe in hair, except on his face, palms, and feet. And Chaka is incredibly loyal and friendly too, after a quick warning snap, but hey, they didn't know each other yet. He's willing to learn more about the human species, more than his older siblings were. It's time for you, Chaka. Born in LA, Paley began his acting career at age 10 as Chaka. He was discovered by becoming a karate black belt at age 9 and appearing on Johnny Carson alongside Chuck Norris. But besides an episode of Airwolf in 1985 and a part in Roger Corman's teen exploitation comedy titled Beach Balls in 1988, he stayed away from the limelight. Paley is 57 years old now and does frequently attend conventions like Comic Con to meet his fans. As we will never forget Chaka. Ron Harper. Season 3 brought a parental substitution, as Uncle Jack Marshall got swept over the same magical waterfall as he was out looking for his family. Uncle Jack wasn't above using deception to further his goals. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but uh, I'm really the god here. <laughs> you are in truth a man of humor. And he also wasn't above using violence against the Slee Stack with homemade bombs and flare guns. Season 3 changed a bit. The family left High Bluff and made their home in the temple on the outskirts of the Lost City. And the show got more mythical, like when we met Medusa. Ron Harper was a seasoned pro. After serving in the US Navy, he got his big acting break with a leading role on the 1961 series 87th Precinct. Then in 1967, he was part of the well-received show Garrison's Gorillas, and he played the titular Lieutenant Craig Garrison. And in 1974, when the Marshals were originally getting lost, he was having his time of it too, on the short-lived TV version of Planet of the Apes. Then more recently in 1990, Harper completed 62 episodes of the soap opera Generations, and he was still acting all the way up until 2015, even playing a minister in the 2001 Michael Bay epic Pearl Harbor. Today, Ron Harper is 85 years old and still resides in California. Not sure we won't see him yet again one day. While Land of the Lost only ran for three seasons, this sci-fi show had such a following that it spawned some reboot attempts, like the 1991 series that ran for two seasons and then the 2009 film adaptation. For behold, you troglodytes, I command the power of fire. We also learned in 2015 that Sid and Marty Croft were workshopping another reboot, so hopefully we'll get to revisit the Slee Stacks one day. Oh yeah, the two-time NBA World Champion Slee Stack. He was just a high school basketball player then, who grew into possibly the most ruthless NBA player of all time. Just ask Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Detroit Piston Bill Lambeer was a Slee Stack for season one, before he went off to college at Notre Dame. Watch the elbow, Slee Stack. So let's Let's discuss. Do you remember a favorite episode of Land of the Lost? Did anyone enjoy the 1991 series or 2009 film? Let us know in the comments. We read them all. And if you enjoyed going over the waterfall once again with us, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for even more. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thank you for watching.